So welcome to the Utilities Educating on Green Button webinar. Uh, my name is Jeremy Roberts. I'm the general manager of the Alliance, being assisted today uh, by Mimi Shang. You should see on the screen. Uh, let me just uh, give a quick introduction to all of our speakers today, and uh, we'll get started right away. Uh, Mimi's a senior PM for Silver Spring Networks and Analytics and Consumer Products uh, in San Jose, California. I have to say, Mimi has worn many hats here at the Alliance and continues to do so. so she uh, used to have both the treasurer and secretary roles, and now serves as vice chair of the organization on our board. Uh, further, she heads up the Alliance's Global Marketing Committee and U.S.-centric marketing. And of course, in her spare time, she helps the Alliance staff with uh, running webinars, but also with many other marketing resources. Uh, first off, you're going to hear from uh, Zoran Stojanovic. Uh, Zoran is a program manager at London Hydro. Uh, London Hydro sits across the pond from Cleveland, Ohio. It's on the Canadian side, nestled between Windsor, Ontario, uh, which is across from Detroit, and the great city of Toronto. Uh, Zorn has been with London Hydro for uh, just over two and a half years, about the length of time the Alliance has been in existence. And while Zorn does not serve on our board, he is very active uh, in participating in the Alliance and works closely with our chairman, uh, Syed Mir, who is the CIO of London Hydro. Uh, next, you're going to hear from uh, Amy Kite Castadone. Uh, Amy is the manager of data governance and products at Pacific Gas and Electric in California. Uh, having been principal product manager of third-party data platforms for PG&E's Demand Response Program. Amy serves as our treasurer of the Alliance on our board of directors and has also been uh, a part of the Alliance uh, since we started and even before the Alliance came to be. Uh, finally, you'll hear from Kimberly Crescentia. Kim is a professional engineer and heads the Green Button Production Support as the Customer Services PMO pro Project Manager at San Diego Gas and Electric in California. Uh, Kim serves as our secretary of the Green Button Alliance on our board of directors, and she's been a part of the Alliance also since its inception and before it came to be. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like, uh, I'd like to uh, bring uh, Zoran Stojanovic to the table so that he can uh, present to you a little bit about what London Hydro is up to and uh, what, they have, uh, what they have on their plate. Well, thank you, Jeremy, and thank you, everybody, for joining today. Uh, my presentation uh, includes uh, a quick overview of London Hydro, uh, our program engagement, uh, future Green Button, and I will also talk a little bit how Green Button has improved our customer service and engagement to date. Um, as Jeremy mentioned, uh, uh, Please uh, feel free to uh, note all the questions, and we'll try to answer them at the end of the presentation. So uh, starting with a quick introduction of London Hydro, uh, we're an Ontario-based utility. Uh, Jeremy already shared the coordinates. And we provide electricity and water services to the City of London. Uh, we have been supporting Green Button initiatives since its early days, and uh, not only from the from adoption point of view, but also as a member of Green Button Alliance. Um, we also participated in one of the milestones. We are one of the first participants in our Ontario Provincial Green Button Pilot Program, where we jointly work with Mars Discovery District and Hydro One, working on the, on the adoption and a business case that I'll cover in some of my one of my slides. And as mentioned, we're a, a we're a proud member of Green Button Alliance. Um, starting off with our digital strategy, it's uh, it's really been uh, at London Hydro. It's been about digital first cloud first and open by design. And open by design, it's really where Green Button fits. And my slides that, that are coming will, will, will tackle this topic and explain to this a little bit more in, uh, in detail. But really what this slide talks about is bringing business value to our customers. Uh, we installed the smart meters back in 2010, 11. Uh, we, were in, we were on time of use rates. But really, uh, you can see that uh, the green button really injected that value and options and enabled customers to put them in the driver's seat when it comes to leveraging and use of this goodness of data that we really sit on. Uh, taking that further a little bit, uh, I really wanted to highlight a few KPIs that really get the green button's been in the back, back end of this. Um, 
developing and providing more choice to our customers uh, really enabled us to grow our e-bill uh, loyalty. We have a loyalty program for our customers uh, for moving over paperless uh, delegation rates. So we, we're able to, we're a big university and a student city. So really the green button enables us to transfer that ownership and delegate the data and leverage it uh, and have it really self-serve for our customers. So just a quick snapshot of our KPIs and what I'd like to highlight is uh, there is underlying green button influence to these uh, growth curves that you see on this on this slide. I will take the opportunity also to talk about evolution and uh, just go a little bit back, a couple of slides back in time, how the green button started and what really uh, what our evolution timeline is. Uh, on the top of the graph of the timeline, you see uh, how everything started. It really was a call to action in the U.S. Uh, and uh, on the bottom of the timeline, you can see closely how the Ontario uh, market followed through. There are a couple of milestones that I want to highlight on this on this uh, timeline, and that's definitely our uh, uh, Ontario's Green Button Policy Workshop and the Ontario Business Case for Green Button that our ministry currently working on. And uh, for those. So if you are not aware about the long-term energy plan and uh, climate action plan, Green Button has a sweet spot and an uh, important role in, in those uh, Ontario uh, documents and, uh, and the plans. Uh, really, if I go back, this is the timeline, but really how it looks uh, in a little bit more user-friendly view. This is our Green Button ecosystem to date and growing. And uh, what really it's interesting is to see these names and these uh, leaders in the, in the market. Uh, also quite proud to see uh, solutions popping daily in Australia, uh, India, and Sweden, for example. And um, so it's really to see how organically the green button uh, standards is growing. Uh, now I'm going to focus and essentially take the timeline and zoom in only on the London Hydro piece. Um, we started, as mentioned, with smart meters and rollout back in 2010-11. Um, and shortly after that, we really we implemented the Green Button Download My Data. And I'll explain that in detail in a bit. Um, 2013, we, are, we migrated to cloud computing. Uh, I think we're probably one of the first utilities. Uh, right now, we're working with multiple clouds, from Google, Amazon, Bluemix, and so on. And we're really leveraging the best what they can offer and focusing on, on our strength, which is providing solutions to customers and serving them the best we can. Um, in 2015, uh, our platform actually expanded. Uh, we providing, collaborating, and providing services to two other utilities in Ontario. So they adopted our scalable platform, and they essentially fast-tracked their green button development uh, with that. Uh, and uh, we're really, this, uh, I would say, differentiates our platform uh, that we're taking it, we're pushing the boundaries. Uh, you can see the thermostat on top of the 2015. So our green button platform includes not only residential data, includes every customer's data in any interval that it comes comes to, to us. So if it's a commercial customer, so it would be in five minutes interval data, if it's residential hourly. And some of our customers actually do have foundations, one-minute, uh, sub-minute data. And I'm really excited about uh, what's right now in 2017, which is we're one of the we're the first utility that got approved with a real-time data uh, pilot uh, pro program. And uh, all the data that we're going to be collecting from our and working with our customers will be in a sub-second, and it will be provided in the Green Button platform. Uh, not only not only is it going to benefit our customers, but we want to uh, enrich and help the existing third-party ecosystem that we have connected and provide more data sets so they can deliver more value with, with, this, with this data. Now jumping back with really Green Button standard, I hopefully excited everybody uh, what, the, what the timeline evolution is. Uh, it really doesn't hurt to repeat what the Green Button standard is because there's a, uh, from time to time, there's a quite, I hear some mis misconception in understanding what really is. Uh, there are two flavors of, it, of a Green Button. As, as you saw early in the timeline, it's download my data, which is simply just downloading the structure in XML 
uh, file format. The real power and benefit comes to the when we introduce Connect My Data, and that's where the customer uh, is fully empowered in the driver's seat, and it's automated. It says automated secure electronic data transfer. The next slide uh, shows more detailed technical view, and I'll try to simplify it and focus only on two, those two yellow boxes. It's really about establishing, having customer, uh, enabling them to establish the trust, and enabling that standardized data, tra data transfer. And one more thing to notice, Green Button really is not a new standard. It's a collection of well-known industry standards that have been around for many, many years and many, many years to, to stay with us. So all these technical slides, how does that really look? Uh, for customer, what's the experience, how does it work. This is the London Hydro implementation view. So it's really three simple steps. Uh, number one is customer has access to our utility portal. Uh, in utility portal, there's a section for the green button, connect. Uh, the section outlines connected third parties and choices the customers can, can leverage for managing the electricity and uh, and their household and so on. They select the application of their choice and the next step is essentially electronic authorization. And then from that point on, third party is enabled to call the APIs, query the data. And one thing that I forgot to mention in the previous slide, uh, not only that we have, that we push the boundaries and the cloud and our infrastructure approach enabled us in, the, in, in doing so, uh, we also uh, provide uh, green button data in the cadence as we co uh, collect it. So right now, if I'm about to share and query the data from my household, it will be only four, uh, sometimes three hours old. So that's, that's as, uh, as frequent we get it from our current smart metering system. Uh, with the real-time data pilot, uh, that data will be probably one minute old, and we'll be able to provide that through the APIs as well. Quick overview of how we accomplished all of this. This is a quick snapshot of our platform. As I mentioned, uh, we have our operational data store or meter data management storage uh, where the, all the metering data is stored. Uh, that data is effectively transferred to our cloud green button platform. Uh, and the green button platform essentially applies privacy by design and provides authorization mechanism that customers and third parties can leverage. Uh, what does really cloud enable us uh, in, this, in this picture? Enable us to not to worry about the scalability. Our solution scales on demand and for example, we have an app that queries all 150,000 uh, user accounts that they currently have it and they can call that on, on a minute basis if they want really doesn't impact our performance. And um, yeah, from that point on, you can see in the bottom that uh, bottom right uh, right corner, that uh, that additional view, how the data gets authorized. Fairly, fairly simple. How it's then being done. So when we talk about a green button, it's not really about just the energy data. It's really about anything that's time series. So our platform does ex extend to water, gas, and electric. We're also certified for Download My Data. We're currently undergoing certification for Connect My Data with UL. Uh, our cloud uh, platform applies these standardized data structures and anon anonymizing data, which is that privacy by design. And then from that point on, the data becomes available through APIs. We currently have about four, 24 apps connected, and this infrastructure is also available in a test lab. So London Hydra is running a test lab environment where third parties can connect, test their uh, green button capabilities, work with the real interval and customer data. And from that point on, once they demonstrate those abilities, we're able to connect them to our production server and promote them uh, to our customers. So we do have the test lab for those that are interested to test it, and it's available uh, to all third parties. Now, skipping to really what that green button means to us in London Hydro. Uh, I really segmented it for residential, commercial, developers, City of London, what it means to Ministry of Energy, our partners, our staff, 
it really is this pillar in the middle. It's about creating jobs, about conservation, demand management, our targets, uh, climate targets, and it's about economic development. And how do we how do we how do we create this, and how do we do that? I'm going to actually demonstrate that through through a couple of use cases. Uh, our school board typically, when somebody asks me to explain how does really this bad green button benefit London Hydro and your stakeholders and your customers, I, I tend to pull 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 up our Thames Valley or our school board uh, use case. Our school board spans across seven utilities, LDCs, local distribution companies. And what really happens is their headquarters is in London, and for them it's impossible to manage electricity when they don't have data for the entire school portfolio at the same time in the same same structures. So really this is the Green Debbie being a, a great supporter of Green Button, and right now we're helping them bridge this until every utility becomes Green Button compliant. Some of them are already are. Uh, some of them are not, but uh, right now we're providing all this data and the platform and they're able to authorize their um, energy applications to uh, to use this data and they can effectively manage schools as entire portfolio as opposed to in a, on the one-to-one -one basis. The next one is our City of, uh, of London, our shareholder. Uh, the City of London runs uh, numerous programs and similar engagements uh, such as London Hydro and this is just one of the examples how we help our, sh our shareholder and our customers indirectly with Green Button. Uh, essentially they have the program that's called Active and Green Communities and they have the need for data integration, customer to leverage, integrate data with a third party. So Green Button really provided cost-effective quick way to enable our city with their program and um, right now this program is still uh, actively running and uh, and growing strong. Next up, uh, just wanted to take an opportunity and explain um, where where we see Green Button going next. Ecosystem is growing, and uh, Kim and Amy will talk about their successes and third parties and the choices uh, that they provide to their customers. Uh, the next step is to effectively connect the solutions with the customers across the boundaries and borders. Uh, so this slide really demonstrates where we had it and working next and it's uh, addition to the Green Button Alliance allowing effect, essentially service that allows to uh, connect and query solutions uh, and the data custodians what we call utilities that provide this service uh, through an API as well. Uh, we call it Yellow Pages for Green Button. And to conclude, uh, what Green Button means to London Hydro, it really means our utility innovation. It, it is a catalyst, and we use Green Button as a development platform. Everything that we develop, any solution for customer, it is by default uh, compatible with Green Button. Really means local jobs. We support our local universities, hackathons, uh, three party solutions. Third-party solutions are being born in our city, Green Button compliant, and it's about a market leading and leading customer experience uh, because Green Button is all about providing choices and uh, and uh, providing that specific uh, service that will not fit every customer, so they can choose and pick and manage the electricity uh, the best possible way. Jeremy, that's that's my last slide. Thank you, Zorn. Zorn, there was a question about uh, pricing information. Uh, if that, what kind of price information is provided, and is there real-time access to the pricing? Uh, you know, um, Jeremy, just to uh, uh, reframe your question, you're talking about what's available in the green button and the price. I, I believe that. that the question was simply what type, uh, what kind of price information. Yeah, and. Um, uh, is provided, and is there any real-time access to the price? Uh, right now, actually, there. Are, uh, that's a great question. Uh, so right now, the pricing from the pricing point of view, uh, time of use buckets of cost components are provided in the Green Button API. So those structures are already available. Uh, we're also incorporating right now the real-time or the I would say interval uh, commercial industrial data structures as well. So the customers can pull that, or the third parties can pull that uh, as well. 
so yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, the pricing structures are definitely available. And for those who are looking for more details, I can I, they can contact me directly. Fantastic, Zorn. How does somebody become a third party for London Hydro? What's the process? Uh, there, there are two ways. Uh, so we have our either contacting me directly. That's I guess the easiest right now from the webinar. But our website, my mygreenbutton.ca, offers form and uh, and the way you can submit, and uh, they will go directly to our Green Button team. They will provide them with uh, details on what's required to connect with our most likely first with a test lab, unless they're fully, uh, they will have to demonstrate their capabilities. And uh, from once that's completed, I will promote them to the uh, to production. So to to summarize, uh, filling out the form on mygreenbutton.ca website, if it's an inquiry to connect, from that point, our team will contact you, provide details, what's required, and work with you until you're successfully connected. Great, and there's no cost for that, right? No, no. And one of the benefits okay. is Fantastic. to have a test lab that it will really that really helps third parties to play and experience the capabilities working with the real data, anonymized data. Great. We have some additional questions, Orm, but I want to save them for the end um, because we they might be similar to what uh, uh, what uh, Amy and Kim have to speak about as well. Okay. Uh, so we'll we'll. Uh, We'll switch that and hold off on those. Keep your questions coming, obviously, and we'll uh, we'll readdress them at the end. Um, and while we're switching presenters, I just wanted to ask uh, those of you on the line who are utilities, if you could answer a quick question for us. Uh, basically, uh, if you are a utility, uh, do you provide or plan to provide green button data uh, and answer the uh, fill in the blank, so to speak, uh, answer the rest of the, the sentence here with whether it's uh, few weeks or a month after collection all the way down to uh, same day collection. That helps us um, get a handle on what's uh, what's going on. Well next here from uh, from Amy Kite Costadone, uh, the manager of data governance and products at PGNE out in California. So thanks for the introduction, Jeremy. Um, as Jeremy said, I'm Amy Kite Costadone. I manage the data governance and products team. So we're focused on a suite of products and programs that allow customers and authorized third parties to um, access customer data. So a little bit about PG&E for those that don't know. We are a large investor-owned utility in Northern California. We provide energy services for about 16 million people. We cover 70,000 square miles, and it's a very diverse topography and a number of different climate zones within our service territories. So there's everything from um, our Central Valley customers with um, very hot summers to our more mild um, temperate climates along the coastline. Um, and we have 24,000 employees, and over 50% of our energy supply comes from non-GHD admitting sources. So I'll move in um, to the next slide here, um, give an overview of our um, progress and our share my data. That's what we call our green button connect application at PG&E, our share my data kind of um, history to date. And then I'll talk a little bit about what we're seeing um, now as far as adoption and then where we're going with the platform. So PG&E started its smart meter deployment back in 2006. Um, at the end of 2011, we started with our green button download, so giving customers the ability to go in and download their data um, into a CSV or XML file, um, either their interval data or a monthly look at their data. Um, at the end of 2012, we deployed our beta launch for Green Button Connect. So we participated in the DOE Apps for Energy and initially launched that with three different vendors to um, kind of get early learnings around the Green Button Connect and leveraging the API. Um, that was used when we got our customer data access decision in the end of 2013. Um, I put the decision number there, so for those utilities that are interested, they can look up all of the details there around that decision. So that ordered the three California IOUs to build out um, a customer data sharing platform, a customer authorized data sharing platform. So PG&E launched that platform 
um, our Green Button Connect My Data platform in early 2015. And those triangles on the slide indicate releases that we've had to date. Um, so where, we're, where we are now is Share My Data is PG&E's platform for safely releasing customer authorized data to third parties. Um, through those various releases, we now share, we can share all customer types, so res, non-res, ag, CNI customers, and, meter, and all meters are supported. So the different um, intervals for the meters, if you're on a five minute meter or a one hour meter um, or 30 minute meter, whatever the um, interval is, it's recording the data, we can share that in our Share My Data platform. It also allows customers to share their information across multiple service, service accounts, and we provide electric and gas interval usage, billing, and account information, meaning that the customer can either um, share their information in a way that will keep their um, PII uh, undisclosed, or they can share it in a way in which they will share their name and their service agreement numbers and their addresses with the third party of their choice. So the Share My Data platform kind of has, supports multiple things at the company. Um, first, really, we're supporting this growing market of third-party products and services. Um, those th third-party products and services require customer-specific data. And we're also seeing increased customer demand for their data and secure data sharing. So, I mean, this is a model that's used in pretty much all other industries, and our customers expect this of their utility. Um, Implementing this also support, we can use this to support PG&E programs, which release customer authorized data to third parties. This really brings operational efficiencies, and it also helps us reduce the need to share PII with multiple vendors. So instead of building out one-off integrations with all the vendors that we work with, if it's a customer authorized um, data sharing, we can use the Share My Data platform um, and you know, use a standardized platform and reduce the need to share all of our customer information with different vendors. So this really, you know, provides customer engagement, operational efficiencies, and drives the, and helps support market innovation. So I have um, the next kind of two sections of this deck go through what the customer authorization experience looks like and then what the, the third-party registration experience looks like. So this is from a customer perspective. We've built this out assuming most um, customers will start on the third party site because if you think about it, um, data is just a, we are, we are providing a pipe in which to share data, but the actual use case and value proposition is defined by the third party. So assume, if you will, a customer is on another website. They would see um, a box that says something like, you know, share my PG&E data, they would click on that. Um, this uses OAuth 2.0, so this is kind of industry standard, what you would see if you want to share your Instagram photos with Facebook. It's a way to do a three-way handshake between a customer and two third parties without needing to provide passwords to um, third parties to keep them secure. So if you're on a third-party website, you click uh, share my PG&E data, it would take you to the login screen. If you're coming from a third-party site, this would already be pre-selected. It would know what site you're coming from. So this example shows just Solar Company. And then you would say what kind of data you want to share and for which service agreement and set a date range. Um, right now we have a, a second authorization page that just confirms what you just selected. And then you confirm it, and that's it. Um, this is also mobile responsive, so customers can complete these steps on their mobile phone as well. Um, from a third-party perspective, there's four steps here for a third party to become a registered third party on Share My Data. Um, first step is they register basic information, contact information, and their functional URIs. The next step is to um, exchange security certificates. So PG&E uses SHA-2 cert. Um, the third step is to review your registration information, terms and conditions, and we will do an email verification step. And the final gate there is um, a testing phase to verify third parties can connect to our system. So there's three testing suites, 
API OAuth and application information resource request test that must be completed. Those tests need to be completed within 90 days. If they're not completed within 90 days, that's fine. Um, the third party will restart the process. So once that third party is set up, there's three different ways that they can access customer information. Um, they can set up for daily subscriptions where they receive a notification when the data is ready to be retrieved. There can be a you know, in synchronous or asynchronous request um, for um, service agreement information or customer data. Okay, so what are we seeing? And I have this picture here. I realized from a past presentation that I did not everybody's familiar with this picture, but um, this was an internet sensation last year. I think you either see this dress as a white dress with gold lace or a blue dress with black lace. And if you look at it for long enough, it can switch. So our numbers are a little more straightforward than that. Um, but what are we seeing? We're seeing customer data sharing so far. Um, we've shared 1.9 million uh, unique service agreements through our Share My Data platform. And I broke these down by different types of use cases here. We have four to 3,000, what we call our standard users. Those are kind of most typical use cases. 19,000 service agreements shared for purposes. I use this term Rule 24. Um, that specific, that's what PG&E calls it, refers to our electric rule. But that is, is about third-party demand response providers being able to bid into the KISO market. And in order to do that, they need customer authorization and access to customer data and we use the Share My Data platform to support that. Um, the biggest number here is 1.85 million in CCA customers. So CCAs are community choice aggregators. We also use the Share My Data platform to share data about um, CCA customers with the CCAs in our service territories. So we're projected to hit 2.5 million service agreements shared by the end of this year. As far as green button download, we see about 10,000 downloads a month. Um, that's been pretty steady over the last few years. We have 108 third-party vendors set up right now. And the um, pie chart on the right shows the different types of third parties that are set up. I went over CCAs in Rule 24. Self-access, of course, is look, typically could be any kind of customer, but typically large commercial customers that have the technical capabilities will get set up to get all of their own data from the system. Um, and then we also have a group of third parties called EE Finance, which um, these are third parties participating in EE Finance programs that need access to customer authorized data um, in order to support those programs. So what have we learned so far? Um, for third parties, the average onboarding time is nine and a half days. The quickest we've seen a vendor get set up and go through the process is two days. Um, and the longest is four plus months with hundreds of touch points and getting the third party set up. Um, the most successful third parties getting set up have knowledge of um, API development as well as utility data models. <coughs> we find most third parties have um, one or the other skill set. Um, not a lot seem to have both together. So as the utility, as the data custodian, we do end up providing some support to help these third parties um, kind of get up to speed and, and leverage the system. So once a company clears that integration hurdle, goes through it once, it's typically much easier for subsequent um, integrations, if that makes sense. Um, the other learning is that while standardization across the data scheme, schemas is really important, it's also important to provide a consistent, easy user experience um, across the different data custodians. And so that's something I know in California that we're working on, the three California IOUs are working on this um, this year and next year on making a more similar process on how customers are authorizing their data release. Um, typical use case right now is what you would expect, right? So Fortune 500 companies, universities, munis, getting access to um, all of their service agreements kind of across her territory and using a software program to help visualize 
um, and analyze their data across those different areas. Um, I talked a little bit about the be in the beginning about how we use this platform as well with different pg e programs. So here's an example of three different use cases there. Um, we used a mobile app for a TO use pilot. Our residential customers are defaulting to time of use in 2019. And so we used, um, we tested out uh, a pilot using Share My Data with a mobile app to help customers and understand their usage and impact of transitioning to TOU. There's a DG rate analysis tool that helps customers view rate options specific to them. Um, and on bill repayment, which I spoke about a little bit before, the release of customer information for e-financing purposes. So what are we working on now? Right now we have a lot of resources. The team's really focused on some um, changes to support, better support, Rule 24, these non-utility uh, demand response providers bidding into the CAISO. So we're working on streamlining our customer authorization process. Um, the goal is to make it fully mobile responsive and reduce the number of pages so that customer can authorize the access to their information, um, ideally within four clicks. So within one page and four clicks. Um, and then we're also working this year building on a marketplace listing of green button services and applications. So customers can um, easily, more easily find programs and services that are right for them. Um, looking ahead, and I know I'm tr trying to be mindful of Kim's time here, um, I won't read through this whole slide, but basically, especially in California, we're really seeing, you know, policy and program changes, um, you know, doubling our EE savings by 2030, opening up the CAISO market to third parties, um, our, the, the growth of uh, connected devices. Um, so we're seeing changes along the policy front. Uh, quick changes in technology and the increasing role of third parties. And this future vision is all enabled by access to AMI data. And so we see Share My Data as being a big piece of that to help support this changing, um, this, uh, changing utility landscape. Uh, so I've provided here just some links for you guys on the phone. If you're interested in finding out more, you can go to pg.com slash share my data. Or um, if you're interested kind of more broadly in PG&E's data sharing um, programs and tools, you can take a look at pg.com slash data and take a look at our suite of data, um, data tools that we have available to our customers. All right, that's all I have. Should we that's do fantastic, Amy. Okay. Thank you. I, I want to ask you, uh, a couple questions came in. How much do you spend on helping third parties integrate? I don't have an exact num uh, number for that. I'll say it varies widely. Um, it is one of the things we're trying to get a better handle on, frankly, um, and set up some SLAs around what third parties can expect. Um, we think it's reasonable for us to provide some support, but obviously when it comes to you know, our developers looking at somebody else's code, that's kind of too far. Um, so we are working on developing some better SLAs and setting expectations around what to expect from PG&E or what not to expect from PG&E. Mm -hmm. And it's possible, of course, to terminate the third-party authorization if I was a customer. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Anytime. Okay, fantastic. And you mentioned um, uh, the, the importance of having uh, standardization across the, the data schemes. Um, and I guess one of, the, one of the things that we find a lot of uh, uh, users out there see are, are the green button data in XML, of course, uh, mm -hmm. but then also similar data in CSV and other file formats. You know, um, I know that can be confusing for folks because those file formats are not standardized. Uh, we do, just uh, for the audience, uh, we do a certify to the standard, which is uh, 
which is uh, a standard of the North American Energy Standards Board. Uh, so this is um, this is an important piece of the puzzle that the fact that this is a standardized uh, XML stream that's used for the different applications as opposed to um, something in CSV which will be different from one utility to another. Just a point I wanted to, to make, uh, adding on to what you said about uh, that level of standardization. Mm -hmm. I want to, uh, uh, for, first off, the, the result of the previous poll was that um, it looks like most of the utilities intend to provide data uh, about a day after it's collected. So that's that's pretty good. I got another question for utilities as we move to our next uh, presenter, Kimberly Crescentia, the uh, this customer services PMO project manager at SDGNE. Uh, so let me do that. Let me launch that up for us so we can take a little look here. Uh, I'm interested in the intervals uh, that you intend to provide to your customers. Uh, you can fill that out if you're a utility. That would be great. Okay, it looks like most are, are planning to uh, to uh, do about um, about hourly, uh, with some going as uh, close to about 30 minutes or smaller. Uh, so that's great. So that's good to hear. People love uh, those tight intervals. Okay, Kim, let us know what's okay. happening over there at San Diego Gas and Light. I'm going to go through a similar presentation to Zorn and Amy, and they did a great job of giving a lot of background information, so I'm just going to skim over um, a lot of those slides, and we will meet the time limit. Okay, a little bit about sdg &E. We cover 4,100 square miles. Not sure how that uh, translates to kilometers, square kilometers, um, but we cover all of San Diego County and the southernmost part of Orange County. We serve um, 3.4 million people with 1.4 million electric meters and approximately 900,000 gas meters. We have about 4,400 employees at SDG&E. Um, just touch on this slide, um, SDG&E is committed to energy efficiency, innovation, and renewable energy. So before Green Button, similar to uh, PG&E and um, London Hydro, we wanted to leverage our smart meter technology, and so we wanted to provide some online tools and for customers to have a positive experience with smart meters. We developed um, our first uh, iteration of our an online analytical tools, and we were also approached by Google to um, launch their power meter widget um, back in 2011 and coincidentally following on that was the US White House call to action which SDG introduced in November 2011. So Zorn and, and Amy both touched on this I'll just um, highlight a few different things. Um, what is green button um, down here um, it's partially hidden by this uh, icons here, but um, it, 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 it's a brand. Once you see that the green button logo, you know you've got specific capabilities and you've got interoper interoperability standards for testing certification and you know that certain expectations are going to be met. Um, in addition to the final decision, this middle box here, um, Amy had touched on the, the, the box in the right, which is a minimum set of requirements for green button connect and the SP file format. In the middle box here, there was also the smart grid privacy decision in July 2011, which directed the utilities to file applications to, to provide data access. Let's see, next slide. Go. Okay. So, just a different view of um, the green difference between green button connect my data and green button download my data. The green button download is a manual transfer, and the green button connect is an automated transfer. Okay, so I'm starting to get into specifics about SDG&E's green button download my data and connect my data. So download my data was officially launched in January 2012. We provide both electric and gas usage data. It is um, behind my account so a customer has to be um, an, a registered my account user and we have a, nearly a million green button downloads to date. 
green button connect my data. This is the automated transmission of um, electric and or gas usage data um, and it's per customer request and consent. We also have the capability to provide monthly billing data. Um, though we've re released that functionality, it's not fully deployed yet with our third parties. We offer three data scopes, one and done, um, that's a one-time data transmission, and then ongoing with no end date and ongoing with specific end date. Um, third parties have uh, six historical time periods, which they can choose, 13 months all the way up to 36 months. And they, they can also elect to receive no historical data. Continuing with uh, Green Button Connect My Data, um, we have uh, OAuth functionality deployed um, but not fully released yet with third parties. We have developed a third party filtering tool on seg.com which allows a customer to find a third party that would suit their needs um, for analysis of their energy usage. We capture the um, taxpayer IDs of all our third parties so that we can track where they are. This is actually a mandate of the Public Utilities Commission. So if there are quote unquote bad actors within the um, third party community, um, we, we will know between utilities. And within the SP file is also the quality of reading the RQMD indicator. Um, Amy had mentioned though that they do allow um, they do allow the sharing of PII. SCG has not deployed that function block, which is also called the um, retail customer schema. That could come at a later date. Okay, so going on here to our uh, third parties again, we officially launched this in December 2012. We have at most um, about 5,600 unique meters um, that are receiving data from third parties. We have um, currently 34 registered third parties. 28 of those are the Green Button Connect, which are the independent third parties. We also have six demand response, what we call DRAM um, third parties, using our Green Button Connect platform. And at any given time, we have about 10 to 15, maybe even 20 um, open applications. But some, a lot of those are coming in as inquiries on how do they become a third party, what are the technical um, specifications needed to do so. And we have about 6 to 10 that want are waiting for us to get our OAuth completed so they can do the deployment um, real-time API. And that's uh, currently what it, um, PG&E is using, and Amy showed some of the slides there. And similar to um, PG&E, we also use the format internally for some of our SDG &E applications where we send data to our um, vendors. Um, one, one last thing, unlike London Hydro and PG&E, we don't have a test lab um, where customers can play and see uh, uh, test, their, test their connections and such. Okay, so this slide here um, are, is a list of um, all our currently registered third parties. We have the, the 28. Um, I think you saw some of these also on London Hydros, and, and um, I know some of them are registered with pg e as well. Um, London Hydro mentioned that the school board uses a Green Button Connect platform. One of our interesting um, uh, use cases is a schools competition that are Unified School Districts put on every March, April to coincide with Earth Day and it's a three-week competition, 50 schools and they utilize green button transfer of data where they can see the next day what their, um, what, what, what their measures and trying to reduce energy amongst the, the students and you know one school wins and they, they get prizes for um, for the students and uh, becomes a big deal around Earth Day. So that's one really successful use case where uh, Green Button Connect is has been um, proven. Okay, let me go to this next slide here. So this slide might be not, I'm an engineer, and so this slide to me is intuitive, but this shows, to me at least, where all the um, the stakeholders within sdg &E on the left side, the infrastructure and systems on the right side, and who touches what. So you, sh you see the Green Button Connect platform, we have my account, 
and also Account Assist, which is what our call center uses. We have our CIS system. We have SEG.com, which is our outward-facing uh, website. We have our MDMS. We have the OAuth gateway, and we have our edicts. And our stakeholders on the left side, we have customer programs, um, and within customer programs, green button program, which I manage, our call center, our production support, our customer communications, and all of our ancillary business units that are involved in um, either helping Green Button get established or touch in some way its, its uh, touch points with, with customers. And Smart Meter Operations, of course, Systems Integration and Architecture, and our edicts team, which actually sends the files to the third parties once a customer enrolls in a Green Button app. Okay, now we're running a little bit short on time. I'll go through some of these here quickly. So our sustainable green button ecosystem, we've got the decision, SEG is participating in the alliance. And while we do not do any type of active marketing for third parties, we do customer outreach to our customers at our EE and demand responsive customer events. We talk about what avail the third parties and green button connect and green button download. And we do also promote green button connect and download at our customer communications, our energy notes on our bills and in within my account. Okay, oh, let's see, oops, sorry, previous. Um, so again, we, we do transmit, transmit via Green Button Connect um, file format to over 1.2 million residential meters to one third party, and this is an example where we use it internally. And Green Button Connect, the file format, is being leveraged for other programs. Specifically, we see it a lot in demand response. Amy touched upon some of those in her presentation. Um, it helps with process improvements, and we want to streamline development so that we get consistency among the utilities. And what lessons learned that we found is there are no end to the, the type of uh, third-party mo models available for usage analysis or how they want to use the data. And we know that the standards will continue to evolve. Um, customer feedback. Customers want a simple enrollment process, hence the OAuth. They want channel options. They want to be able to go to the web. They want to be able to use it on their mobile devices. And they want the third-party filtering tool so they can select which app might be the greatest use to them. OK, last two slides. This is how the traditional solutions by provider, scg &E, form the base of the pyramid, our partners, and then the open market on the top. What we want to see with things like Green Button Connect is this transformation where you have the open market um, with all of the types of apps and then the utilities down at the bottom. And additional information, seg.com at our green button and of course the Green Button Alliance. So that's all I have, Jeremy, and I think and we're at time. You were fast, I have to say. <laughs> that was great. Hopefully not too fast. That was great. We didn't have a a whole lot more questions that came in. We do have a few that are outstanding. We will answer those via email. Um, uh, for those who are uh, have, can take a moment to tap the screen uh, just to give us this. This is for everybody, not just for the utilities. And in fact, uh, if, if you work at a utility, this question, uh, think about this in terms of, uh, of your own business or your own home, what you would like uh, to see in terms of data. Uh, and then at the end, we will, uh, you'll at when, when the webinar uh, ends here, when you leave, you'll, you'll have a survey. It's just two questions. How did we do? And uh, what else would you like to see in a webinar from the Green Button Alliance? So we really appreciate you joining us today. And uh, thank you uh, to all of our speakers and uh, for all that you do for the Alliance. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, we are member driven. And so it's, uh, it's, it's important to us to, uh, to have everyone's input and participation in making the green button a uh, standard uh, to be reckoned with. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you.